Howdy folks and welcome to this week's segment of the Fishing with Dom podcast, Tackle Talk Tuesday. It is almost September, the date right now is August 29th, 2017. It is late fall, I'm back at school, autumn is right around the corner, and if you're a Michigander or native to the Northwest or any part of the country, that means that hunting is going to be the agenda for many outdoor enthusiasts until for the remainder of the year, uh, whether it be waterfowl, turkey, uh, large game, bear, or deer. This is the point in time of the year where many outdoor enthusiasts pack up the fishing rod for a couple of months and pick up a rifle. As of now, in the state of Michigan, and along with other states in the Great Lakes region, uh, in the Pacific Northwest especially, there is an incredible once-a-year fishing opportunity taking place. And as a native Michigander, this is something that you know runs deep from person to person. Uh, if you don't in, in Michigan, if you don't partake in this activity, you know some people who do, or you know some people who've made a living doing it. And today's topic for the podcast is regarding the annual salmon fishing run. Now, back in 1966 and 1967, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources stocked Chinook salmon and coho salmon, and along later, uh, what word am I looking for, uh, added pink and Atlantic salmon into the Great Lakes system as well. Uh, lo and behold, so many years later, it became a very powerful fishery, making the state of Michigan billions of dollars as far as local revenue. Uh, it was a really big provider as far as different businesses, jobs, and it generally helped the economy just because if you couldn't afford to go out on a charter or have your own boat, when the salmon migrated into the river every, every, every single fall, it was an explosively incredible time to get out there and catch potentially the largest and hardest fighting fish of the year. Now, in Michigan, we've got four different kinds of salmon. We have Chinook, Coho, Pinks, and Atlantics. Now, the most prized salmon are Chinooks, and they're also known as King Salmon. They're the largest, they're the most ferocious. These guys come in numbers, and the state's uh, Department of Natural Resources funding focuses primarily on Chinook salmon because that's what most people fish for. Now, next in size is the coho salmon. These are a little bit smaller, but they still put up an incredible fight. I've caught a, only a handful of them in my life, but the smaller two species of salmon we find in Michigan, whether it be the pink or Atlantic, they're a lot more farther few in between. You have to find special fisheries that cater to both the pink and Atlantic salmon. Along the tip of the thumb, a lot of Atlantic salmon can be caught out of Grindstone City. And then up on the St. Mary's River, a lot of pink salmon can be caught when drift fishing or casting spoons up towards, uh, there's a power plant up there. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But this is the time of year where the salmon fishing absolutely picks up. You know, guys are headed out there. Guys are missing work. Guys are putting a lot of money into these annual up north fishing trips where whether or not they're going out to the pier and casting out live bait or casting spoons off at the pier or drift fishing in the river uh, to catch salmon. It's a really, really big deal. And I'm going to get into talking about this just a little bit. Now, when I was a kid, I'd go at least once, maybe twice a year to the big Manistee River and when the, when the salmon were in, they were super hot and heavy, even with the big decline in salmon population in the Great Lakes over the recent 15 years. There were still a lot of fish to be caught in the river. Now, there were a numerous amount of ways to catch them, but with recent, well, not so recent, but within the past two years, on certain rivers, you can't fish with treble hooks anymore because you end up snagging a lot of fish using certain methods so you can use single shanks for this time of year uh, early spring or early summer when or early season pardon me when the salmon first start to show up 
it can be as early as late July or the first week of August. And that's when these fish, you know, they're not great in numbers, but the fish in there, they're pure. The meat is red. The scales are silver. These guys still have a crazy amount of fight inside of them. And they're very susceptible to eating when they come into the rivers compared to later in October where they're not focused on feeding. They're more focused on reproducing and dropping eggs and all that fun stuff. Um, early on in the year, guys who drift fish, uh, whether it be bottom bouncing, float fishing with skein, you know, single eggs, beads, flies, there are a numerous way to catch these fish early on in the years. But later on towards October and later in September, the Chinooks become very aggressive once they're hunkered down on their nest where they're going to be mating around where, you know, their eggs are going to be deposited. And throwing jointed crankbaits like the Rapala J11, the big old jointed one, comes with good sized treble hooks but on certain rivers you can't fish with it a certain time of the year just because it has treble hooks and you're more likely to snag a fish now you can drift fish a single hook spoon and they can still catch it if you reel it in very somewhat aggressively through the slack water where they might be hanging out at or you can still continue to drift uh, yarn natural baits uh, i've seen some guys use night crawlers before you know, depending on rivers, sometimes you can use minnows. It all depends on how it is classified in a trout stream, at least in Michigan. Now, whether you're fishing the province of Ontario, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, New York, anywhere around the Great Lakes region, or even Pacific Northwest, up towards Washington, uh, British Columbia, and Alaska, there are many different ways you can catch salmon. But there are also so many ways you're not allowed to fish for salmon, especially in, Ala especially in Alaska. Uh, they get a lot of numbers, an insane amount of fishing pressure for them. Last thing you need to do if you ever go on vacation or spend the money and go fishing for salmon in Alaska is to pay a ticket to their, their conservation corps. Because it's, it's not cheap. You want to do things the legal way. You want to go out there. You want to have a good time. Now, let's focus as far as freshwater Chinooks salmon in the Great Lakes. The males, a mature male that comes into the river is about two years old, while the female is anywhere between two to four years old that comes up into the river to spawn. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly why that is, but generally speaking, the females, they're a lot larger when they're mature, and they're just egg wagons. They're fat, they're full of eggs, they're ready to drop, and then the males will come in, they're very aggressive, they're ready to they're ready to do what they have to do to procreate because that is the final step in the salmon life cycle is to produce your own babies and then, you know, live out the rest of your days in the river, whether it be a couple weeks and before you know it, here comes early November, the trout fishing picks up, the steelhead fishing picks up. And there are salmon carcasses all along river bends, washed up onto the shoreline. The bears will be around, you know, just feasting, feasting on the carcasses that were a remainder for the salmon fishing, uh, the, the salmon spawn, not the salmon season, if you will. But as far as gear goes, early on in the year, I know a lot of gentlemen who they'll center pin fish for them. And they'll be using a 13 or 15 foot rod. And, you know, they, all they need is about a 14 pound line just because that rod absorbs a lot of shock and takes in a lot of power from that fish. Now, if you were fishing a spinning rod like a lot of people do, you might want a, a line that's a little bit stronger so you can really connect with that fish and have a fighting chance, especially if there is current. You know, I fished with 12 pound line on my spinning rod before on the big manistee river in wexford county michigan and you know these salmon they're very tall they're very long they know how to fight in the current they're really smart with 12 pound line i've had salmon before take out i've had salmon spool me before too so that's why i always bring a bigger reel just so i have enough line on there if you have a small enough line 
and they take you out and they're just teetering back and forth in the current just like dead weight there's no way you're going to reel them in you're going to pull the hook out or they're going to be able to throw that hook it, it it's just how it goes so as far as line i know some guys who use about a 25 pound or 30 pound braid but with braid if you get hung up in trees or rocks you've got to you've got to pull it out because that braid isn't going to break and you got to have something to wrap wrap your fishing line with to pull it out because you can't wrap it around your hand and pull it because it's so thin it'll cut your fingers to the bone and i've been nipped by braid a couple of times and it doesn't feel good at all now as far as salmon fishing you can go with a good size monofilament like a 20 and get away with it because i've done that for a very long time you can use a braid and get along with it it's just the big thing i've noticed when it comes to salmon fishing don't focus so much on the break strength of your line yes get a strong line but take into consideration your rod is going to absorb a lot of the power that that fish is trying to get out of you and your reels drag is going to be able to deposit a little bit more line as you fit need uh you know you can catch any sized fish on any size line you just have to have you know the odds on your end of the reel literally you know you can I, i've caught 30 pound salmon before on 10 pound line my rod was strong and my drag was set right and i was playing that fish there's a way to do everything when it comes to fishing and fishing is a game about advantages and statistics if you hook them solid you control the fish and you well first of all you're able to control the fish if you've got a strong rod that's got a good amount of flex to it and a, and a strong amount of power behind it you're gonna be able to control those fish a lot better than you think you are i know some guys when i used to work in a sporting goods store they'd come in and buy a really big braid and really really strong heavy powered rods and the problem with that pardon me is say you you dig some you dig your hooks into the fish and you've got this strong line this heavy powered rod and you're just cranking into them you're you're bringing that fish in well there is such thing as a little too much yes i've buzzed salmon in before and just because they didn't fight all that much but if they're trying to get away and you're just you know pulling it out of the you're pulling that fish out of the river like a tow truck in the winter time you you increase the potential to pull the hook or straighten out the hook and i've seen that happen before which is another topic i'm gonna touch on real quick by quality hooks these fish are very the, their mouths are very bony these fish are very strong if you get one hook set and you're fishing nine hours you want to have absolutely everything to your advantage, um, especially with your knot tying. I was just talking about different line. You know, you can fish with a braid, a monofilament. I know some guys that'll fish with the fluorocarbon just because it's a little bit more abrasion resistant than a braid. And you constantly want to be checking your knot because I've hooked up to countless salmon in my days of doing this. I did this my entire childhood and fought them for two seconds and the knot gave out. It was absolutely the knot because I'll drift three-way rigs and I will float fish for salmon. It was the knot that gave out. Plain and simple. By quality hooks. Berkeley Fusion hooks are really nice. I'm going to hopefully try those out if I can make it up salmon fishing this year. Gamakaksus. Trocars if you can get your hand on a couple. VMC makes a good hook. You just want to make sure it's not a wire hook. It's got a, You want a hook that has a strong gauge that's sharp and is going to stay sharp because... These hooks are going to get banged up. They're going to get uh, beat up against rocks. They're going to get dragged through mud and over zebra mussel beds. If that happens to your hook a handful of times, you're going to want the advantage to win the salmon fishing lottery when you do get that strike and get that hook up. Now, you can catch salmon any time of the year. Some people tell me, oh, salmon don't bite come in October. And I'm like, well... They kind of do. I've definitely had them bite before. I've seen them come and hit lures before. I've caught them square in the mouth when I drift with yarn or different flies or different style of jointed crankbaits or jerk baits. Uh, the Storm Thunder Stick is a very popular model. Husky jerks will catch fish. Uh, shad wraps. It's uh, th 
there are so many different ways to salmon fish. I know a lot of guys who will even salmon fish with a nine weight fly rod. The options of it and availability to salmon fish any way, shape, or possible this time of year are really endless. And what it boils down to is having the right equipment, being knowledgeable, and lastly of all, being safe. Uh, when it comes to river fishing especially, there's a lot more than going out there and just drifting a hook. Uh, find the holes, look for river bends, look for areas where fish could be hanging out at. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I'd just go out there, drift aimlessly, and you know, I'd catch a couple fish, but now that I'm older, I know where the holes are. I know what to look for. You have to think of salmon fishing and fishing in general, philosophically, like where will these fish be? And take into every consideration possible, you know, what might their activity level be? What might be the general mood as far as fishing goes for the day? If it's raining and the water's dirty, you know, try changing colors, try looking in different spots. Maybe salmon fishing is really good in the rain. Uh, I've, I've never caught one in the rain now that I think about it, but I've just caught so many over the years. I just know how to do this uh, in my sleep almost. It's unbelievable. And I'm a, I'm a big catfish guy. I'm a big bass fishing guy. I've caught muskie before, but no, no muskie of size might I might add you. Maybe something about 40 inches or so. But aside from that, these salmon, even later in their life when they turn brown, they have they have shoulders. These guys have shoulders. I've had I've caught twenty seven pound salmon before that barely fought, and then I've caught fifteen pounders that took me for the ride of my life. It it was similar to tying up to the back of a city bus. Now, Michigan in particular has oh goodness a countless amount of salmon fishing rivers: the Grand River, the St. Joe the Manistee, the Platte, the Betsy, the Boardman, the, the St. Mary's, the, the Akiak will get a couple. There's a lot along the Lake Michigan coastline that produce consistently good numbers of salmon every single year. Not so much on the Lake Huron side, and I know, of course, they'll get a lot of salmon up in the UP from Lake Superior and the northern end of Lake Michigan. But as far as salmon population numbers go in Lake Huron, population numbers are down so guys fishing the Asabo, fishing the quinton they will not get all too many salmon compared to you know somebody would on the manistee and to my personal opinion i believe that the big manistee is one of the greatest uh fisheries in in north america i've caught steelhead there smallmouth bass countless big salmon it's a it's a fabulous cold water fishery and the brown trout fishing is incredible as well but go places where salmon are going to be the dnr puts out a release every year on stocking efforts see where they've been stocking fish over the past couple of years find public access sites get on google maps look for river bends look for areas where you can park your car put on a pair of waders go on down to the river and Drift with yarn, spoons, crankbaits, flies, whatever is legal that you can fish with, have it with you. You know, the more the merrier, and the more stuff you have with you, the more likely you are to hook up to the biggest fish of the year. And I've done it a lot at night growing up. I've done it a bit during the day. I think salmon are a little bit more active at night during the river, during the river spawn, excuse me. It is an incredible opportunity of the year to catch these fish. Uh, I hope I can do it this year. You know, I just moved back to college at the University of Detroit Mercy, uh, studying to be a doctor. So, in a couple of years, like if I can't make it this year or next year, you know, I'm not going to miss anything because I know it'll be up there. But as of now, the salmon that they are currently catching along the tributaries of the Great Lakes. They haven't gotten too many numbers yet, even though they're certainly in, and it is still late August. They've, ca they've been catching some of the biggest salmon in years out there. Now, I'm really excited now that I've been talking about this, and I'm about to wrap this up today. 
for you for this uh, weekly Tackle Talk Tuesday podcast. But if I were to point somebody in the direction of a cheap and easy salmon fishing rod, I'd say get in a Boo Garcia Vendetta, a medium heavy power rod. I've caught a lot of salmon with it. I've caught a lot of salmon on mediums. I like the medium heavies. And you want a, you're, you want a quality rod that you're not going to be afraid to get dirty. Ugly sticks work too. If you know, you're not a super serious fisherman or if you have the rod to do it, an ugly stick will do it. A medium heavy is what you're looking for and a decent reel. Uh, you, you don't need to go out and spend $100 on a brand new reel when you're drift fishing for salmon. Just something that is strong and will get the job done. But as far as my line, I'll fish 15 or 17 pound mon for my monofilament choice. I will fish the Stren uh, Super Knot. I think it might be called the Power Knot now. But Stren Monofilament or a Trilene Monofilament. But when it comes to braid, if I'm ever fishing the braid, it's going to be the Berkeley Fireline. And I'd put that about uh, a size 20, maybe. It just gives it a little bit better feeling when you're drift fishing. I'll fish with the braid if I ever have to make farther cast. And I really need to jack those hooks inside to the fish's mouth. But this has been this weekly installment of Tackle Talk Tuesday. I, I had no idea. I'm almost at the 22-minute mark, and I only thought I was going to do this for a couple of minutes. Now, it doesn't matter if you live in Michigan, upstate New York, Wisconsin, Wyoming, uh, not Wyoming, Washington or Alaska. There are salmon to be caught all over the Great Lakes and the Pacific Northwest, and if you haven't done it, you need to do this before you before before you die. If you're ever going to write a bucket list, you're going to want to go you're going to want to go salmon fishing. It is an absolute rush. It's been a big part of the northern Michigan culture. Everybody and anybody has done it up here or they've known somebody who does it. But that'll be all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. This has been your weekly Tackle Talk Tuesday, the Fishing with Dom podcast. You be sure to have yourself a great remainder of the week, a fantastic weekend, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.